Holy Trinity. The word itself is never actually mentioned in the Bible, yet it's considered to be one of the core beliefs of Christianity. The Trinity is the way in which humans understand God. Some people like to use real world illustrations, for example an egg. An egg is made of three parts, the shell, the white and the yolk, and together they combine to create an egg. However, the difference with the Trinity is that each individual element is in itself fully God. So you wouldn't take the yolk from the egg and say that yolk is an egg. It's simply part of an egg. However, if you take the Holy Spirit from the Trinity, he is still fully and completely God. So how does the Trinity work? We know that throughout all of history, people have worshipped thousands of different gods, but the Bible tells us there's only one. So in our reality, there is one true God, but the word Trinity means a group of three. The one true God is described as three different persons. Each person is fully God, yet distinct from one another. The three persons are called the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible specifically states that each person of the Trinity is fully God. John 17.3 proves that the Father is God. John 20.28 proves that the Son is God. And Acts 5 verse 3 to 4 proves that the Holy Spirit is God. The Bible also says that the Trinity has existed eternally, meaning they have always existed and always will exist. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Recha Ha Quadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and even the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well, sincere honors and salute to other elders and brethren scattered abroad. Shalom to you, few sisters as well, you supporters of the truth, and shalom to the elect. So, anyway, I've been kind of going back and forth with the Christian because the vocabulary knights are pretty pissed that I did a particular video on the Christianity and why why they need to go to the, the head apologist to learn how to ask questions to the Hebrew Israelites. So they're pl pr plenty pissed, right? So, so I said, okay. So then they going into the Trinity because I brought up the fact of the Trinity. And uh, okay, let me read a comment. It's a couple comments before we read a barrage of scriptures disproving this Trinity doctrine. Now, the thing with scriptures, as we bring up the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would have to be with you to understand it. You must understand that people who have a belief in something and they believe that their whole life, it's hard for them to break away. But the elect will break away. This is why I broke away from Christianity, white plantation Christianity. There's nothing wrong with Christianity. There is something wrong with white plantation Western Christianity who raped, robbed, and destroyed the world going back to the 1600s, even 1500s, okay? So, 1400s. So, um, let me read a comment right here. It says, somebody says, wait a minute, please explain how that's not Trinity, um, whoever this name, Tony Vellanuva, 94, gave you First John 5 and 7, which clearly shows Trinity. And you say it's not. And this is what I mean that sometimes when you read these comments, these people are bugged out, a lot of them, but some of them are really sincere about, you know, they're asking the question. You know, we never know who this is. This could be an Israelite, right? First Peter 3 and 15, always be ready to give an answer. For a man that asks you a reason of hope of your calling, right? Of your calling. So we're going to go to First John, and I hope I can make this a little bit quick. Five and seven. First John five and seven. It says, "For there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one." You ever go get married? And, you know, some of you who've been married and went to that courthouse or went to the church, okay, which i never gotten that far, but I'm just saying in general, and you don't even have to go to the church and all that. Marriage is a connection, a union between you and your spouse. So you go to the church, and what does the scripture say? You become one flesh. Does that mean because you're one flesh, that you and your wife have the same exact flesh? That you and your wife are the same person? 
Or is it when you go to go to the job, right? And unity just means unite or means uni means one. Trinity goes Trinity goes to the tri the triune, which means three entities, right? So when you work for a company and say you work for Walmart, everybody has a Walmart shirt. But is everybody Walmart? No. Are you working as a team? When you play on the sports, when you play basketball, you play football, and you win a championship, it's a whole winning team that wins. Everybody gets a trophy. Is everybody separated? No. Society, media separate the greats. But for the most part, if I get a ring, everybody gets a ring. That means we're one in league with one another on the same team. We'll prove that further too. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to read another, another um, I want to read another comment. Because one of them said, when I, when I pulled up about Babylon, right? Let me see if I can pull this up. I said something about Babylon and Egypt and so forth. And um, uh, this is what they had to say. He says, Concerning the Babylonian in Egypt, etc., using the three concepts is because the kingdom of darkness, Satan, tries to be like the most high. They must use what is already created to to imitate. I have no idea what the hell that comes from. No idea, no clue. But it's something that they make up. But let's say it's the case, all right? You know why you go to church on Sunday? For you Christians, because it's after the sun. This goes back to Babylon, Assyrian Babylon. Because of Nimrod, because of Semiramis, because of Tammuz, right? Not so in that order. The sun is spelled sun. The original sun, right, was of Tammuz, the S-O-N, because she had gotten immaculately concepted, which was brought in by Pope Pius as well. And we can go back to the Council of Nicaea, even 170 AD, where a lot of these Israelites, some some of our own people indoctrinated some of this stuff into the Bible. But that's another video. I just want to bring that up. So when you have the word son, the word son was is originally, as you see, S-O-N, but they play on the words, and they didn't want you to catch it, so they spelled it S-U-N. Sun's day. But it's the first day of the week according to the Gregorian calendar. You, you people ain't catching it. Right? So you have the sun because it was after Semiramis got impregnated by the sun, so she claimed, and she had her son Tammuz. This goes along with Easter, Easter Monday, and so forth. That's a whole nother video, right? So you have Monday, which is actually Moon's Day, which is after the moon, right? You have Tayus, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Frias, and then you have Saturday, which is after Saturn. So a lot of you Christians, you don't have a clue what you're doing. You don't know history and don't know where none of this stuff come from. Not here to try to convince you. If you're the elect, you'll get it. But I can't go any further and tell you that. So now we're going to go into a barrage of scriptures and prove that this is not the case, right? Anyway, uh, let me see if there's any more, any more um, of these uh, comments. There's a whole bunch of them. I said, well, you know what? I'll just do a video. Okay, yes, amen, all in one, 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 right? Like I said, you go, when you go to get, you know, you go to a wedding or you get married, you're considered one flesh. And if you're one flesh, doesn't mean that you're actually one flesh. It means you're in you, you, unity together. You've united. You're under one authority. Just like when you win a basketball team or a football team and you win a championship, then you're all one. Let's go to Ephesians. Let's see what this says. Ephesians 4 and 4. It says, there is one body and one spirit. So here we go. Paul is saying, there is one body and one spirit. Let's go to the, um, this is called unity of the body. You can look this up. Unity of the body. We're not making this up. This is straight scripture. 
He said, there is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, meaning you're all connected. We all have the same goals, just like a job, just like a business that's ran. You have the head, you have the CEO, you have the manager, the corporate manager or whatever else, all the way down to everybody else, just like in the animal world and the insect world. They're all doing one thing for a common goal, right? The Lord, the Lord, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through and through all and in you all. So what is this saying? Because you had our people who was worshiping the practices of other gods. Of course, there's one Father. Remember, he said, there's no other God beside me, which he was talking to Israelites who was putting other gods beside him, right? So clearly you can see here, this is a unity, but it consists of many. Now, when you see God, the word God just means power. This is why he's called the most high power, period. Um, it says here, I just saw this. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Yahweh Shah, uh, this guy said Yeshua. And then I said, well, he went into some um, off-brand Hebrew. He said, oh, well, you speak to, he to paleo. The paleo isn't, uh, it's all, it's kind of like similar. <laughs> right, okay. Anyway, till we come in the unity of the faith, one. So it's not saying that one person, this is not saying Paul is the only one, but in everybody else, they're with him, but they're inside him. See, this doesn't make sense, right? When we go to dissociative disorder, identity disorder, is a mental health condition, someone with did, who does have multiple distinct personalities. So are you telling me the Most High God has a dissociative disorder? A multiple personality disorder? That's not making sense either. So let's go to first um let's X that. Let's go to first Corinthians eleven. Be ye of follows me even as I also am of the Messiah. Right? Now uh I praise you, brethren, that you remember in all things to keep the ordinances, the order as I delivered them to you, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. I'm saying that verbatim. We don't like saying that. The head of every man is Yahawasha, right? That you ignorantly call Christ. And the head of the woman is the man, okay? And the head of Yahawasha, you call Christ, is God. How the hell are they all one? Now, obviously, this is not making any kind of sense. The, the reason why it says you're all one, this is why they don't go back into the other languages, the other texts, you know, the Hebrew, they don't really look up anything. If you, The reason why you, it, it's considered one, because you're in unity with one another. Just like a family. A family is in unity with one another. You got four wheels on a vehicle, four tires. They're all the same. They all look the same. But they all work together as one. Right? That's the, the point. I mean, this is sick. You know, this is really sick. The uh, street apologist, the vocab, the street apologist, I heard out his own mouth, said that the Holy Spirit is a special man, right, who comes down to have sex with Mary. So the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus and God, right, had sex with a woman, okay, committed adultery on her because Mary was with Joseph, so he had to be listening in the next tent while he, while he pulls Mary aside and have sex with her. And then, this is crazy, the Holy Spirit impregnates Mary to put himself inside Mary just to bring himself back. Make that make sense. I don't understand that. Maybe they can explain that on a comment board. But maybe there's different forms of Trinity doctrine that's being out there. And this is why I say it's all garbage. It's all rubbish, right? It's all rubbish. Anyway, uh, so, you know, 1 Corinthians 11 
says the head of the Messiah is Yahweh. This is period clear. I don't, I don't you know. John 3, 16. Here we go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His only. So he gave himself? Anyway. Matthew 6 and 9. This is the prayer. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, our Father. So when he's saying our, he's connecting all of us. So according to their doctrine, everybody's trinity. Because when we see this and we say this prayer, we're speaking amongst even the brethren and all the ones that's of the elect and saying our Father. We would never put ourselves on the level of the Father. So there's clearly a separation. We don't put ourselves on the level of Yahweh, the one you call Jesus. Clearly that's a separation. But for whatever reason, Jesus would have put himself on the level of the Father. And then this guy says, the Messiah was never created. I don't know where they get this stuff from, man. Then he goes back to Genesis 1 and 1. That's a whole nother video. I don't know what Hebrew they read and you know, you know, they, they, they just copy and paste, man. They don't understand Allah Hayyam, which is plural for many. They don't understand that it was many. It was Yahweh and the angels. The Most High didn't have to do nothing. The Most High never came down here or even have to deal here in this planet. Why would he? He's the almighty creator. Then he says, the one scripture when he says, I am the Alpha and Omega. So now that says, again, here we go again, that that's the triune. They don't understand that Yahweh Shah is the run running the show. He runs the spirit world. He runs the show. He runs everything. <laughs> you know, you, you can't make people believe stuff, man. They just have, the spirit have to be with you to understand that. John 14 and 28. Ye have heard now, and I say unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. So this disassociated this disorder that they're trying to put on the Most High is uh, very sick. It's a sick doctrine, a sick disease. Matthew 24 and 36, here we go again. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. You know, we can't get around that. Again, it's, it's hard making sense that the Most High, he's the Father, he's the Holy Spirit. And then when it talks about God, it doesn't always mean the Most High, but they don't understand that either. And this explains why a lot of Christians are trying to learn from us, and they're, but they're going into theology they're going into studying and they're going through all the wrong sources and this is why they can't never get it this is why they can't never deal with us when they come up to us this is why christianity is the worst thing going this is why they dance with guitars and pianos and pipes and they teach the people nothing now all of a sudden they're trying to get on a study kick since the israelites have found truth now every goddamn christian's a damn theologian theological scholar now yeah, right. That's all I, that's all I have on that shallow wall.